Demer the Mariological Icons of Medieval Georgia. So um, we will listen to Professor uh, Nina Cicinadze from Georgia, from Ilya State University, Faculty of Arts and Science. So Dr. Nina is a um, director of Medieval Studies Center. Uh, she graduated from Tbilisi State Academy of Fine Arts uh, and her main research focus on a medieval uh, Georgian and Byzantine art and visual culture. So thank you so much for um, this interesting event. And I really hope that our participants will enjoy and please try to turn off your microphones while Dr. Nina will presenting the uh, event. And if you have any questions, and I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of questions, you can leave the question just in a chat box or you can ask after the, um, um, the presentation. Thank you so much. So all floor is yours, Dr. Nina. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this event and um, to give a possibility and to give possibility to make this presentation and to share some ideas with you. And I'm looking forward that um, this um, lecture will um, add little bit to the knowledge of Georgian medieval culture, its role and its importance in the Mediterranean world. And um, let me start my presentation. I will share the screen. Um, what, who is perceived as a main um, intercessor of the Christians is a complex and manifold phenomenon. The second century apocryphal texts, especially Proto-Evangelion of James, hymnography, especially Akasistos hymn, homiletics, images and rituals, and of course, dogmatic and symbolic ideological meaning of the virgin shaped uh, forms and ways of her veneration throughout the centuries. Her cult was manifested in public, real, and in personal, private devotional practices. The mother of God was presented in ideological constructs, um, in religious rituals, imperial ceremonies, military milieu, funeral context, and so forth. One of the most eloquent testimonies of her cult are her icons, her images, and particularly her, her icons, and their veneration practices developed during the centuries. It was believed that most um, of the Marian icons uh, have a power to perform miracles. And um, in many cultures of the year, the focus of religious life, of religiosity, and you know, veneration practices. Icons of the Virgin together with their relics, robe or mantle and girdle, uh, defeated enemies, recovered from disease, uh, from illness, um, saved towns, empires, protected um, Constantinople, for instance, uh, protected the um, lives of individuals or uh, punished infidels and so on. The miracle working ability ascribed to the icons of the Theotokos or Mother of God permitted to interact actively with believers and to demonstrate her sympathies and attitudes towards events and or persons. The icons and their miracles were successfully exploited by political ideological systems of medieval times. And first of all, of Byzantium, of course. The promotion of the cult of the Virgin was rooted in the Byzantine imperial realm, mostly. Importance of her role in the Christian history increased after 431, um, after the um, church, Council of Ephesus called by Emperor Theodosius II. Um, and the, uh, you know, as you know, uh, this um, council proclaimed um, Mary as um, Theotokos, God bearer uh, or mother of God. So doctrinal foundation has been created um, at this council. Uh, according to the tradition, Eudokia, spouse of Theodosius II, sent the icon of the Virgin of Digitria from Jerusalem to Constantinople. Another empress, Verina, spouse of Leo I, um, 
who was an active promoter of Marian devotion in the fifth century, established two churches of the Virgin in Constantinople, um, that of uh, La Herna and um, Halkopratia. One of them housed a uh, precious relic, robe, or mantle or, um, of Mary, and another her girdle, or zoni in Greek. The Mother of God appeared on the seventh century imperial seals, and let me show some other examples of imperial seals. Later on, the icons of the Virgin became prominent actors in the imperial official ceremonies and um, triumphs especially. And you see here well-known illustration of Skidizzi's uh, chronicle, Ma Madrid, Ma manuscript from Madrid. And here you see the entering of um, emperor to the Constantinople. Uh, and uh, this procession is uh, led by the chariot with the icon of the mother, uh, mother and uh, child. And um, so I skip the uh, lengthy listing of the cases of the occasions when um, icons were involved in imperial life. Uh, and uh, I think suffice is to uh, remind one of episodes, the final episode in Byzantine history, when Michael Paleologos in 1262 followed barefoot the icon of Odigidria uh, when he was entering, leading to the recaptured Constantinople. An attitude of the representatives of power um, towards the icon of the Virgin are recorded in medieval Georgian historical narratives. A geographical text, legal documents, and um, uh, commissioners' inscription on icons. A number of Marian, Marian cult icons are associated with the medieval Georgian monarchs. The royal patronage is documented both by extant uh, icons and, um, as I already mentioned, in numerous uh, written sources. It is obvious that it is impossible to address all issues in one presentation. And I will try to highlight some uh, focal, some cult icons of medieval Georgia and the um, veneration, her place in the official, let's say, ideological concepts of medieval Georgia. I would like to start my presentation with uh, one of the most celebrated icons of medieval Georgia, uh, Hahuli Virgin, Hahuli icon. Um, you see this huge triptych uh, created for the central image of the mother of God. You see here the sizes, material, and so on where it is kept. So I skip this um, information. Uh, so the central icon of the Virgin is stripped for her, from her initial um, decoration and all the enameled face and hands are preserved according to the, so scholars um, assumed that the, her figure and the ground was um, initially originally was um, from precious metal and um, presumably it was, it has, it had um, repousse revetment. Uh, so the, uh, in the very originally, this icon was inserted into the triptych in the three-part setting, and the ten, yeah these uh, parts are dated. Minimal parts are traditionally dated by 10th century, and the original parts of the triptych are now on the outer part of the lateral wings. But I don't have um, image of this uh, earlier 10th century parts. Richly decorated mount case for icon display, displayed numerous, uh, exact, more exactly, the, there is um, 115 enamel plaques. Uh, these are um, from different periods, starting from 8th, 10th century till the post Byzantine period. And uh, yeah, um, in time being, uh, some of the damaged or lost parts have been uh, reinstalled in the uh, 18th and 19th century. Uh, so you see that Hahuli is the um, Hahuli icon, Hahuli triptych is the uh, excellent example of gift giving to the miracle working icons. Most of the pieces are uh, disassembled parts of other objects, uh, so let's say reliquaries and um, ritual crowns. And um, there is a um, very interesting attempt of my late colleague, Titus Papamastorakis, 
who uh, grouped these icons and he uh, so claimed that um, well, certain uh, plaques um, enamel plaques come from book covers another another uh, set of I uh, icons of images come from ritual uh, icon uh, crown and so on so let me show a couple of images this is um, a yeah, famous plaque with the um, Georgian princess um, Maria Marta and her spouse Byzantine Emperor Emperor Michael the seventh, and this is also well known. His um, virgin is uh, so blessing to queens, and their identity is not known. Um, here you see the I mentioned that um, here are inserted these assembled pieces, and this is the um, one part of Stavrotek or the reliquary cross reliquary reliquary of the Golgotha cross. And um, with bilingual inscription, it says glorify God, gro Christ, glorify uh, Quirike King. And this is the ruler of Kacheti of East uh, Georgia. And this piece is um, dated by the 10th century. And this is one of the earliest uh, enamel, cloisonne enamel dated by the 9th century. And let me show, so one part of the Quirike cross is here and another part of the crucifixion is on the other part of the um, other part of the triptych of the uh, wing. Uh, so, um, the veneration of this holy icon, um, was established by illustrious King David IV, named Rebuilder. In his will, uh, we read, I donate my rubies, precious stones, and pearls to the icon of Hahul the Virgin. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know the, so he transferred this icon from Hahuli. This is the Hahuli Cathedral, um, one of the most important religious center, uh, centers in Tao, uh, Tao Kingdom. Um, this um, now in Turkey. And this icon have been transferred to newly founded um, monastery of Gelati near the capital of Kutaisi, uh, founded in 1106 by David IV as the family, as the Bagrationi Mausoleum. Uh, after its transfer, King Demetre, son of the king, so this is the uh, watercolor copy of the image from, of the composition from, from the Church of Christ of Savior from Upper Swaneti, northwest uh, part of Georgia. Uh, here you see the mm, girdling of Demetre, local, um, local governors, Aristavs, they girdle, gird, girding uh, Demetre with sword. So Demetra, and this is the, in the, at the gate was the tomb of the grave of the David, but actually now it's the cenotaph, uh, his corpse is not there anymore. Probably it was removed uh, to, the, to the main church, uh, to the Catholicon. So Demetra, um, son and hire of, um, of David created uh, this, um, this, brilliant setting for the icon. And here you see, or you don't see, but you have to believe me, there's a Somtavruli, Georgian Unshil script, a quite lengthy inscription, which illustrates and elucidates the importance and meaning of the central icon. Let me show you the inscription. You see here, well, uh, Hahuli was founded by um, David, David uh, Kuropalatis, and Magistros and David III, often referred as David III and by his brother. And so this is a relief from Oshki, but David was the founder, Ktetor of Hahuli Church as well. You see here his images. Well, this is the inscription of Hahuli icon, like you who in ancient times, in old days, literally it says in Georgian, by grace of God Father blossomed, O Queen, David, offspring of David, devoted his body, soul, and church to the Virgin. A new Bezeli, Solomon, and son, and owner Dimitri, revealed the world, your image, resembling the son, O Virgin, be eternal intercessor before Christ. Uh, 
the text glorifies the Virgin and links her with the with the Church of Gelati and Georgian rulers, David and Demetrian. The creation of precious mount case for the Virgin Eigen is compared to workmanship of biblical Bezaleel, who created um, tabernacle of the Ark of the Covenant, so Exodus 31. The reference is also um, made to Solomon and, um, and his temple. So biblical kings who are symbols of unification of nation and strengthening of the faith were appropriate models for rulership of David and his son. The inscription also stresses common descent of the Virgin at Bagrat, it's from Prophet David, since the Georgian royal dynasty of Bagrationi claimed their descent from the biblical house of David. This Old Testament and this tradition goes at least back to the late, late century. These Old Testament allusions were well exploited device in Byzantine ideological system. Thus inscription gives new meaning to the image and establishes gene genealogical links between Georgian rulers or tasteman kings and the Theotokos. The Georgian monarchs continued the royal patronage of the icon in the subsequent centuries. The most striking example um, is um, we see in the um, uh, of royal devotion is described in the by the anonymous historian in the histories and eulogies of monarchs recording life of Tamar and her father, King Georgi. Okay. Here you see the fresco of Tamar from Bardzian. So um, in the um, histories and eulogies, we read that after the victory of Shankori battle in 1195, uh, so the, this battle was between Georgian, Georgian army and um, Eldiguzi dynasty, uh, Atabak states um, of, in modern Azerbaijan and North I, uh, Iran. King Tamar, David's great granddaughter, donated the banner of Halif to the great monastery of Hahuli icon of the Virgin as her great grandfather did. This act acknowledged heavenly assistance and support of royal deeds, as well as divine intervention in the battle in favor of Georgian king against the enemies. Her grandson, Tamar's grandson, David Narin, 1247-1293, in her charter dated to 1272-1273, refers to Hahuli Virgin as his protector. And um, uh, we, there is a um, chapel uh, in... Um, Catholicon of Galati Monastery uh, is South uh, East Chapel where David Narin is buried. And um, in his charter, he says that um, yeah, the Virgin, Hakuli Virgin was his protector. And he also um, made, uh, makes provisions concerning uh, uh, candles to be lit in front of the icon. In the following centuries, other rulers provided donation of various kinds of um, very donations of varied kind to the icon. Uh, so among them must be among the others must be named Alexander the second, sixth century ruler of West um, Georgia, King of Imereti Rostom, early seventeenth century, and so on. I argue that the key for the understanding of the special status of royal patronage of the Hafuli icon lies in its subject, more exactly in the iconography of the Virgin and its prototype. Yeah, this is the interior of Gelati Church and uh, the, the uh, conch of the uh, apes um, is, uh, altar apes is decorated um, with mosaics. Uh, the rest are the late frescoes uh, from 16th, 17th century. Uh, so uh, supplicating virgin a visual formula of her intercession has strong eschatological overtones and is directly linked with the salvation. This type of the virgin entitled Agiosoritisa is traditionally associated to the Agiosoros, holy reliquary already mentioned, uh, of Harkopratia Church in Constantinople, where the precious um, Christian relic girdle of the virgin was housed. As I already mentioned, there are still debates whether the Halkoprate, uh, excuse me, this um, uh, reliquary belongs. Uh, Agia Soros refers to Halkoprate reliquary or Vlaherna. Um, but for us, again, it's important that in both cases we deal with. Um, uh, with the Marian relic. So the icon was perceived as um, sorry. You see here, uh, the, it's very damaged, but you see here the Virgin 
in, in intercessory posture with inscription. You see here inscription, and um, here is more visible. This is the well-known icon from St. Catherine's Monastery from Sinai. Uh, the icon painter and commissioner, Ioanne Tohabi, was Georgian hero monk. Uh, and uh, you see on the upper part, uh, the upper part of the icon, um, miracle working icons from Constantinople. And uh, unfortunately you can't, maybe you can read inscription in red letters in Greek says um, it's labeled as Agiosoritisa. So um, it's interesting that according to Cyril Mango, Halkopratea girdle first appeared in early eighth century. He argues that the girdle was simply accompanying piece of the maphorion or the uh, mantle, which was brought during the reign of Leo the Third, Leo the First in the fifth century from the village near Nazareth. Another zoni or girdle from Zela Masia was brought to Constantinople about 922. Uh, let me show you. It's interesting that Limbuk's Taurothek contains both uh, relics, both girdles, as inscription says. The cult of the relic of Halkopratia was promoted by sermons in post-iconoclastic period. For example, um, Germanos of Constantinople wrote a sermon uh, on the girdle in Zonam, entitled In Zonam. Georgian Nicomedia, late 9th century, is another uh, is an author of can canon of the feast of the girdle of the Virgin. Patriarch Euthymius in 10th century prizes girdle in his writings as well. Nancy Shevchenko, in her famous study on icons in liturgy, argues that Agiosoritisa could be the uh, banner of intercession mentioned in the typicon of John II of Nenos for the monastery of Pantocrator, um, the middle of the 12th century. Uh, John died in 1143, uh, excuse me. Uh, the the um, Typicon describes the weekly ceremony prescribed by the dictator for his commemoration in Valdic icons, the banner of intercess intercession, which ended in Agia Soros or presumably in Halkopratia. This assumption is supported by the fresco of Sopochani. You see here 1260, 1265, where the translation of the relics uh, from Hilandari in Sopochani of the first Serbian king, uh, Stefan Nemanja, is accompanied by the huge processional icon of, um, of the Virgin uh, with the charter uh, in her hand, with the scroll in her hand. Uh, so, um, most probably, it's plausible that the function of the Virgin at Diosoritisa was appropriate for King David's monastery, which was uh, established uh, quotation as an eternal last resting place and burial place for his children. The royal commemorative context of the Virgin at Diosoritisa is attested by another icon of, um, uh, of the Virgin, of praying Virgin from Hobby Monastery. West Georgia. This is the monastery, and this is icon comes from this monastery. Uh, you, you see, so this um, the face is the later edition, and uh, the 10th century, uh, the repousse is, um, and the figure uh, is um, dated by the 10th century. So inscription says, you see here, Christ was Holy Mother of God, intercede before Christ for the soul of King Leon. So King Leon is um, identified as Leon the third, the ruler of Western Georgia, Abkhazia. And um, he was uh, known, it is known that he established, he built the church of Mokfi and Kumurdo. And here is extremely um, conventional, uh, schematized uh, depiction of his, uh, this figure is Leon the third represents him. So it is interesting that um, this icon has a particular, it was particular object of particular veneration. Uh, the icon, um, it was perceived as the focal uh, cult object of the monastery. In the, seven, in the 13th century, its back was covered with the silver revetment. Unfortunately, I don't have picture of the back of the reverse. Uh, it was, um, this revetment was decorated by the Golgotha cross erected on the four step base with sigla Jesus Christos Nica, accompanied by the commissioner's inscription. Um, so, uh, and this um, edition was made by, um, by prominent person 
uh, high dignitary Bedan Dadiani, who was Eristavi local governor and mandat to, to Hutsesi. Uh, and um, the, his function was um, so equals, his, he was responsible for eternal, internal affairs and his wife, Khwashak, are mentioned in the inscription. Presumably the icon was embellished with cloisonné enamels in the same period when um, they added the reverted um, reverse. It is interesting that son of Bedanda Diani Georgi renovated the church, and it is possible that he donated the icon to the church at that time. In the 17th century, uh, it was extend the icon was extended, and um, in analogous with the uh, Hahuli icon, the triptych setting was created for the icon. This is archival photo. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that the central part was um, decorated with um, precious gold uh, leaf, while the lateral wings uh, were decorated um, with painting. Uh, such treatment of Leon's icon possibly could be explained both by the icon's sacred meaning um, and by its association with the uh, the ruler Leon. It is significant that those who visited Hobby in the 19th century and early 20th century indicate uh, the place of Leon's icon at the right side of the chancel barrier, and this is exactly the same place. Uh, in that place was uh, this was the place of Hahuli triptych in Gelati Monastery. Creation of the triptych for Hobby icon, um, its display in prominent place in the church near the sanctuary in a way reminds attitude towards Hahuli Virgin. However, in the composition of the central part of the Hobbit triptych, we can see these elements, these roundels remind us um, the decoration of Hahuli triptych as well. Georgian historical narratives and iconographic tradition permit to assume that together with memorial connotation, yeah, in this period in 17th century, according to tradition, this robe belonging to the Virgin has been transferred to Hobby Monastery. So the creation of, in the 17th century, the, the Repuse decoration must be, could be presumably connected with this event. Uh, Georgian historical narratives yeah, uh, permits to assume that um, Agios Soritis icon has a really very special uh, meaning in, um, in Georgian political and religious life. I mean icon of uh, the Virgin of Vardzia. The Royal Monastery of Vardzia in southwest part of Georgia was um, established, was um, built or um, cut out from the rock. Um, this project has been start, was started by Georgi III, father of, father of um, King Tamar. Uh, history said eulogies of monarchs Mm. Sorry, just a minute. Uh, stress the importance of the miraculous image of Mother of God of Vardzia in securing a victory of Tamar's army over enemies in ro and royal triumph. The author claims the glorious reign of Tamar was conditioned by her quotation, diligent service to miracle working Mother of God of Vardzia. Uh, presumably, the chronicler meant the enhancement of the establishment and enhancement of monastery of the Virgin in Vardzia. The Virgin of Vardzia is referred as, quotation, most holy bringing of the victory. The Vardzia Mother of God participates in royal military campaign and ensures the victory of Georgian army in the Battle of Bassiani in 1202 or 1203 against Ruk Adin, Sultan of Rum. Tamar went to the church, uh, let, yeah, here is quotation uh, from the histories and eulogies of monarchs. Um, Tamar went to the church of the mother of God in Vardzia, there praying before the Vardzia mother of God with tears in her eyes. The queen entrusted her with David Soslan, her spouse, um, and his army, and the banner proved to be lucky. Tamar sent the army from Vardzia and accompanied it barefoot. The author of histories and eulogies ascribed the royal protection and support of the Virgin of, um, of Vardzia, Mother of God. From the very, you see here this text, from the very first clash and striking of swords, merciful God blessed those worshiping the cross and Vardzia, Mother of God, augmenting still more the glory uh, of David and Tamar. 
David is her spouse, David Soslan. The Chronicle illustrates the ideological concepts of the period of reign of Tamar, particularly the idea that Georgia was appanage of virgin. And this concept first appeared in the 11th century in the Synaxarian version of the life of St. Nino, uh, and then was exploited, uh, especially during the Tamar, when the issue, it was really challenging um, issue, the female ruler in such masculine feudal society. So later we, we read, I am amazed how graceful is the Lord to his dwelling place of Georgia, uh, how, uh, and how Wardia, mother of God, protects Georgian people. The same ideological vector is continued by the hymn of the mother of God of Wardia, uh, composed by Ioana Shafteli during Tamar's reign. Um, this uh, hymn was written after the Battle of Bassiani. The hymn prizes the Virgin and provides with an entire range of orthodox ideological, theological, and symbolical interpretation of the Virgin. This hymn, written after the brilliant victory of Seljuks, reinforced um, the uh, reinforcing the authority of Tamar and strengthened strengthening her position in, uh, of Georgian Kingdom as a significant Christian power in the region. It is interesting that. Um, there is a legendary, uh, we, we have legendary history uh, written by anonymous author in 14th century about punishment of uh, Mongol invaders who wanted to destroy Varzi monastery and um, the soldiers were stuck by thunder and burned, quotation, in such a miraculous way the Virgin saved her kingdom. Georgia. Unfortunately, the celebrated icon has not survived to our days, but in the museum, the State Museum of Fine Arts, there is an icon. Oops. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me find this icon. Oops. I skipped this image. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I deleted it. Oh, my goodness. I'm really sorry. Ah, here is it. Okay. So, um, the, or, the original icon is lost, um, and this icon comes from a village named Vardzia in Imereti in, in West Georgia, and there is a 16th century monastery remnants, ruins of the 16th century monastery, and unfortunately this complex is not studied yet, and um, most plausibly, uh, plausible that this uh, monastery was Metochi on, on Fardzia icon. Uh, the painting is late, um, dated by the 18th century or even beginning of the 19th century. But Repuse, the metal part, the interchange, um, the flat and ornamental part segments of the frame, and the uh, it's hard to identify, hard to um, judge by this um, image right now, but the style ornamentation motifs and um, the te technically uh, we can attribute this icon to the beginning of 13th or at least by the attribute to the first half of the 13th century. Of course, we can't claim that this is the icon uh, mentioned in the Chronicles, but at least this is one of the version, one of the copies of the celebrated icons. The appellation of the Virgin of Arzi is also recorded in this applicatory inscription of the reverse of small, heavily damaged painted icon of the Virgin Agiosoritisa inserted into the small triptych from Ubisa. Uh, Ubisa is the monastery in West Georgia. Abashidzes, the com commissioners of the revetment of the reverse of the icon of the Virgin, addresses their supplication to the Virgin of Vardzia. So, uh, unfortunately, this icon is um, under uh, under conservation uh, works, and uh, I, I, I could not um, make make picture, make photo of that. The creation of triptych or venerable images is a well-established tradition in medieval Georgia. And um, we have some, um, some other documents, inscriptions, um, which, um, which prove the importance of this uh, Vardzia, Vardzia uh, Mother of God. Two 14th century inscriptions address, um, addressing to Virgin, uh, underlines were important. One of them is, um, let me see, one of them is, uh, sorry, sorry, okay. Belong to um, Ivane Atabak, mid 14th century, 
who, as it becomes clear from the text, built or refurbished or renovated refectory of the um, of the monastery of Varzia. Uh, this inscription is not its in its own in, in uh, its original place, but for us it is important that he addresses to Varzia Virgin. Uh, there is another inscription of um, Murva Quintichizze dated by 1350. Uh, he was um, High dignitary at the court of King David IX. He, uh, and this inscription comes from Tmogvi fortress. And we read that by the assistance of Vardia Virgin, I started building or construction of the defensive wall. The 15th century text inserted into the historical chronicle of Leon, yet yeah, to sum up uh, the importance of the icons of the Virgin in political ideological discourse of medieval Georgia, I would like to bring to your attention a late fragment, late insertion in Leonti Brovelli's, um, this is a uh, well-known histor historian, chronicler. Uh, this insertion is 15th century uh, travel of Apostle Andrew, uh, who came to Georgia according to Georgian church tradition to West Georgia to, for preaching and bring forth the miraculous icon of the Virgin with him. We read that after the ascension, the apostle, apostles cast lots in order to determine where they have to go to preach. Yeah, this idea is that St. Andrew, um, Apostle Andrew preached in West Georgia is um, well known uh, in, uh, from very, various written, not only Georgian, but Byzantine written sources. But this is um, important for my presentation for our discourse because here, uh, preaching and uh, apostle is his um, deeds, his preaching is combined with the miraculous icon of the mother of God. Uh, so according to this text, Georgia was allotted to Mary, but uh, she was already in her, so she was aged. And according to the Lord's order, Apostle Andrew assumed her mission instead and took with him an icon with miraculously imprinted image of Our Lady. In, in other words, this was icon not made by human hands. The story reflects the biblical practice, uh, casting uh, lots, I mean. In the Old Testament, lots are cast for a variety of reasons. One of, um, on the one hand, our legend must be considered in relation with the practice of casting lots in order to understand God's will. So um, Joshua and Chronicles, you can find this episode there. Uh, I skip uh, exact quotations of the biblical text. And on the other hand, with the division of lands, like, again, in Joshua, you can find this um, chapter 14, 21. Therefore, Mary's allotment of Georgia with a divine will, um, which on its turn acknowledged Georgia's special uh, status. We read that Apostle preached in uh, West Georgia, the Gajara, a particular um, place, where many pagans converted to the uh, new faith. In the place where the icon was set up emerged a spring. Andrew established a church consecrated to the Virgin uh, and ordained priests and deacons. As a response uh, for the plea to leave the icon there, the apostle quotation prepared a large wooden panel and set icon on it. Immediately, the image of the Virgin imprinted on the board. With a great joy, the icon was installed in the church, end of quotation. Um, then he continued preaching and came to Atzhuri. This is the southwest part of Georgia. Uh, this was one of the important religious centers. And here I will show you the, um, it's heavily damaged. Uh, and this is the yeah, view of the Atzhuri Cathedral. Uh, and yeah, in Atzhuri, um, Icon uh, resurrected a dead boy. The icon was placed um, in pagan temple overnight between statues of Apollo and Artemis. Um, next day, um, the pagans entered this temple and found um, uh, crashed down idols. Uh, quotation, while, while the icon of the mother of God, quotation, was shining like the sun in its glory and dignity, end of quotation. After this triumph, um, the pagan uh, pagan idols, uh, after the yeah, triumph of the icon over the pagan idols, numerous pagans adopted Christianity. So the apostle Andrew left this icon in Atzuri and continued preaching in other places. 
this is 16th century icon, golden icon of Atruri. Uh, by the way, it was um, it comes from Gelati. Now it's the it's in the Tbilisi State Museum of Fine Arts. The central part is 16th century, but icon itself was made in eastern part of Georgia in Kacheti. And this is one of the exceptional cases. Uh, most of the Georgian uh, metal icons are gilt uh, silver icons. And this is one of the exceptional cases of um, the entire icon is made uh, from um, gold. Uh, so the central icon of uh, Traditionally, it is um, named as a Tzuri icon, known as a Tzuri icon. And uh, the, again, we, we see here this continuation of this tradition when the miracle working icon, when a highly venerated icon was inserted later into the triptych. And the wings and the rest of the parts are belong to the 18th century. Uh, the text uh, is, for, is from, uh, yeah, this text, this is interesting that the whole story is connected with political, um, with the issues of power and domination. The text is from Travel of St. Andrew, so-called Mescheti version, um, composed by Manuel Retor, um, Greek, uh, by order of Patriarch of Constantinople, uh, Joachim, uh, in the beginning of 16th century, 1501, 1504. Um, Patriarch traveled to Samtsche for a collecting of alms. Uh, he received rich donation from Samtsche rulers, Jacheli family, who strived to gain independence, and they tried to establish the Atzuri as the center uh, to as the center of independent church in their kingdom. So uh, this uh, legend was introduced uh, about the vener venerated uh, miracle working icon of the Virgin, not made by human hand. Mm, which defeated uh, idols of Artemis and Apollo. So here we have the combination of um, diverse approaches, di diverse symbolic meaning of the Virgin, her protection, her miracle working power, uh, which, um, which was uh, connected to the concrete spot, particular spot uh, in Azuri in this case. Here we see so intertwining of two concepts, a special protection of Georgia by the Virgin and a confessional dimension of icon which acts as the um, Virgin's agent. So the narrative aims to create a new focal sacred object with political overtones. And um, actually their whole list of the miracles of Atzuri icon, uh, which is quite significant for um, for understanding of the meaning of the miracle working icons of the Virgin, but um, let me finish right now because so it's the uh, it's a huge um, subject, and of course I could not cover all 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 sides and all aspects of this. Yeah, my presentation highlighted some important aspects. At least I hope that highlighted some important aspects of the centuries long cult of the mother of God with a special emphasis of the royal patronage of Marian icons and their religious and uh, ideological dimensions. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so please, if you have any questions, just um, speak up or you could uh, just write down in a chat box and Dr. Nina will be glad to answer you. Or maybe I, I could give a... Uh, I have one. Actually, it has to do with your yeah, last... Yeah, 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 yeah. John, John, thank you so much. Uh, it has to do with your last slide. Um, there were some intriguing scenes on either side of the central panel. W what's going on in those scenes? Uh, you mean around the, the, the yeah, yeah. around the outside on the triptych? Yeah, yeah. It looks they like are, these are from the yeah. scenes from life of the Virgin, or what? What exactly are they? Okay, so here are some of the compositions from New Testament scenes. Here is the Virgin, the um, Holy Spring, and here is the Ascension of the Virgin, and um, here are biblical um, uh, biblical prophets around her and you see here the crown so some western features western iconographic elements mm -hmm. uh, have been introduced in so-called late, late, late medieval period because so 18th century in georgia is still medieval period feudal system of uh, society thus yeah it's um, it's interesting uh, 
Actually, all these compositions and these images interpret and extend the meaning of the central icon. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, could I'm not familiar with the uh, the Virgin and the Holy Spring. Could you uh, unpack that for me, please? In, in hymnography, uh, as you know, um, Byzantine hymnography um, developed various uh, biblical uh, symbolic paradigms of the Virgin, and in mm -hmm. hymnology and in Akathisos hymn, she is compared with uh, uh, with diverse biblical paradigms, and one of them is the life giving source, Zodochos Pigi in Greek, and um, of course it is. Um, uh, linked with the miracle healing uh, with the springs, miracle working springs with healing ability. And it's uh, interesting that um, in Byzantium, most of the monasteries, they gain their fame uh, thanks to these miracle working springs. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, thank you, John. And James uh, has uh, raised a hand. James, please. Yeah, hi. Um, thank you. It was really interesting. Um, I guess one of the things I wanted to ask from a sort of social history perspective is the examples you've uh, used in this presentation are almost all of like specifically royal interaction with this cult. Do we have, um, I guess what I'm trying to, work out is how exclusive to the Bagrationis this is. So do we have any examples of um, icons, veneration of the Mother of God that can be explicitly attached to other elite families in Georgia, the sort of Aristavial or other courtly families like that? Thank you very much. Uh, you know, there are um, what I, my current research deals with female um, piety. And we have very interesting uh, examples when uh, widows, mostly widows, um, order and entrust their, delete, um, their diseased husbands, late husbands to the virgins. And um, let's say, yeah, this um, intercession and eschatological, uh, overtones of the Virgin, her protective, her special um, favor, let's say, and the protection is revealed in the in this inscription. Uh, you know, we don't have, we are not lucky as um, Western countries are, I mean, medieval sources. Like, um, so as you know, you, you know better than me, they are whole chronicles of the families and they are um, a huge amount of information in the West. Unfortunately, uh, historical texts uh, mainly deal with uh, monarchs. And unfortunately, um, I. It would be you know, speculation, yeah. According to the inscriptions and wills, we can um, find some um, materials, but um, mostly uh, I, I choose for this presentation most iconic icons, <laughs> most um, focal uh, images of... Um, so the images um, about uh, which we have textual evidences uh, and... Um, yeah, mother, you know what, let me think. So even in the sixth century on reliefs um, of stone cross pillars, there we have images of mother of God uh, with, um, with representations of commissioners. Some of them are already diseased, so diseased, diseased. <laughs> so um, yeah, generally she was viewed, she was perceived uh, as protector, and um, one of the, let's say, um, in devotional practices, she is the focal figure, <laughs> briefly, to conclude, to make conclusion. <laughs> I don't Thank know you. whether I gave you a um, sufficient answer, but so this uh, is, no, that was helpful. Under, let's say, under in, uh, my current um, investigation, let's say, deals with these issues, but focusing on female piety. I will have answer on your question shortly, <laughs> I hope. 
more complete answer. Um, thank you, James. Um, so I see John has raised the hand again. John, please. Um, actually, I forgot to take my hands down, but um, oh, I, sorry. <laughs> no, but but there's something interesting. Do you have any question? Well, I can I can make a, a it's sort of a comment. Um, I'm coming in yeah. from a completely different direction, um, and there's a really interesting overlap. Um, in a couple of places with something that's going on in Syria in the Islamic period, but pulling up from local Christian traditions there. And you have, um, a, well, ostensibly it's Aphrodite, um, but um, it's not the one we know. Um, it's an Aphrodite that sounds more like the Virgin Mary than like Aphrodite. She's associated with water specifically, the water of the bathhouse. And this is a bathhouse this is from. Um, and but she has um, the same sort of intercessory um, role of bringing to heaven kings who maybe need a little bit of help in that direction is actually encapsulated in the paintings at Casar uh, um, al Almeida um, in Syria. So it's it's a really really interesting uh, sort of comparison of these ideas of of water and intercession being sort of mixed together. So that, that was why I asked you about the Lady of the Spring. It's really quite intriguing. You know, not all the Virgin and her veneration was connected to, um, with springs. Uh, what come, came to my mind, that even um, the cult of the mentioned Cyril Mango, uh, he links the origins of the cult of Saint Michael, Archangel Michael, um, with um, healing spring in Hona. So this is probably a yeah, sheer tradition, not um, the pur purification and the libation and all these stuff so come from ancient tradition. I can say I, I'm not saying that these healing springs are um, connected only with virgin. Mm, yeah. In Georgia, yeah. yeah, in Georgia, there's tradition the um, where um, the um, where Saint Nino is buried in um, Cajeti in Bodbe. There is a miracle working spring as well, and believers go there and soak into this uh, spring, and so yeah. This is interesting tradition <laughs> involved yeah, well, incorporation of spring, yeah, waters. It, yeah. it goes way back. I mean, it seriously goes way back mm -hmm. um, in the the pagan pre-Christian, pre-Islamic uh, traditions. You you have these these um, sort of shall we say water divinities, um, yeah. female um, who also have mm -hmm. have intercessory power. Um, so, at any rate, this is this is really quite fun. Yeah, I do really ancient stuff. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. So these, these connections are fascinating to me. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, John. So um, any, any more questions? Maybe anybody would like to give a comment? Mm, well, so we have a question. So it's from Jan. Thank you, Jan. Uh, so that's the date of the Apostle Andrew le uh, legend, largely spring uh, from the period after the medieval unification of Georgia, or is there evidence for it before this date? Does yeah. it look to have a West Georgian source more than an East Georgian source? Are there any likes with Armenian sources or does it look more that these traditions can be a Byzantium? Thank you, Jan. Thank you very much. Uh, let me give you a brief answer. So this tradition is linked with uh, Byzantium. Um, this um, tradition, let's say, not legend story, tradition, let's say, emerged uh, in eighth century 
both in Byzantium and in Georgia as well. And even Byzantine sources, they mention the conversion of uh, Scythians of the north, uh, east and north part of the Black Sea, that is the Colchis, the western part of Georgia. And um, yeah, this is the general, um, it's the, it is not linked with post-Byzantine uh, period, only this narrative links St. Andrew with miracle working icon, uh, not made by human hand of the Virgin. But this um, legend, this story, this tradition goes back to 8th century. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you, Yad, for your question. So, mm, yeah, it's <laughs> Thanks. Um, so any any more comments or questions? Um, yeah, why, so, may, um, comment. Why, why I brought this piece uh, of text? Because it, um, it illustrates, uh, I was hurrying and uh, so I, I was hurried to finish in time in 40 minute my presentation. Uh, actually this, um, piece of text, this is um, very, very important. As I already mentioned, here you see combination of religious, dogmatic, uh, political, ideological uh, concepts. And at the same time, the uh, how, how an icon was viewed, not only in this period, but it reflects, it accumulates all views and all attitudes towards the icon. And um, what is interesting is that for this certain period, this tradition was um, alive, let's say. And what was important? Uh, it, they refer this text authors and um, commissioner. They refer to Apostle um, Apostle uh, Andrew. Uh, they combine with um, with the tradition of uh, special patronage of the Virgin um, of Georgia, and at the same time the and the key the key object the key agent in whole in whole this story is icon of Mother of God, and this was important for me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have actually a question. I mean, um, uh, why, why, I mean, what do you think? Why the Kahuli icon is so crucial, important for, for us, even, even today? I mean, of course, uh, Atur is the important and I mean, kind of a key, but and as anti anti icon as well, but um, I, I I'm I'm just even 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 in the um, in the more wide um, auditory than than just researchers or or uh, um, monks or the uh, usual the in the religion people. I mean, why why do you think why holy? Exactly, the Hakul is uh, very important for, for us, for, for a Georgian culture and Georgian people. What do you think? Let me explain. First of all, this, as they say, uh, you know, the bigger is better. The departure point could be <laughs> this. Uh, I'm joking, of course. Uh, so the central icon is the biggest known, biggest existed piece of repousse, uh, sorry, of cloisonne enamel. And um, because um, the whole triptych is the money, there is really unique piece, not only uh, among Georgian medieval um, artifacts, but um, even generally because it combines a lot, it's a small museum, let's say, it accumulates a whole treasury of Bagrationi. Let me show, can I, can I share once again? Uh, first of all, um, um, yes, yes. particularly uh, the, um, as if we consider as work of art, not from religious point of view, but as a piece of work of art, as I already told you, this is the unique piece, the, um, oops, what I'm doing? Let me share the, where are you? <laughs> okay. This is the biggest known um, cloisonne enamel, her face, the central image. This is first, firstly this one. Then uh, the um, precious material, 
uh, gold, electrum, uh, the al alloy, te technically, technologically, historically, confessionally, it combines everything. And um, I, actually, I was trying to explain the importance and the popularity of the icon in my presentation. Uh, why particularly this icon was brought by David? Because it was linked with uh, uh, Halko Pratia, her relic, and so on. And then David, you know, the so David, um, the fourth, uh, he was the key person associated with the apex, with the climax of Georgian uh, monarchic power and um, united Georgia. So he's the figure, key figure, iconic figure. And uh, so this icon is associated with David Fourth. And um, as I already told you, uh, this icon accumulates, displays the whole wealth of uh, Bagrationi family, of Bagrationi dynasty. Um, and so first, artistic quality, artistic merit, let's say, historical context, and then uh, the um, multiple works of art. So this is the explanation. <laughs> Uh, and again, back to my presentation, I was trying to explain her meaning, her religious uh, meaning, her protective uh, function was the, and this tradition is still comes up to late medieval period. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. Well, um, I do understand it's, it's, piece of art but um, um you you know i i don't know how how the the people who do not study uh, it as a piece of art i i uh, um, I, um, I was just asking you know that does they do really the do really they understand that how how important it is for the art or or the for the researchers or or, or something like that to uh, i mean did, did i express what i what i mean um i mean i i don't think that just um i don't know for, for example school children do do really understand the the real um importance for the um, art um, and but but they still um, they still have it as the top uh, you know what i mean it's it's just very interesting how how the people do understand and get the the idea about the all that Explain iconography but, but yeah. mainly it's interesting yeah <laughs> this is the this is the subject of in, investigation for i don't know anthropologists or sociologists yeah, yeah. yeah very interesting because yeah it's really iconic icon a holy virgin it is manifestation embodiment of the um, strengths of uh, Georgian state of its artistic achievements, uh, King David, it combines everything. And again, it's price, let's say gold, uh, precious stones, um, whole range of, I don't know, precious artifacts. And um, you know what, my quick answer, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, how I can create it, I mean, whole set of images and triptych created in 12th century, it has strong feeling of identity. It still cares in the um, strongest possible way, the identity of George of uh, Georgian nation, let's say, of Christianity. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank your you. Um, so <laughs> thanks a lot. So Narvin, um, um, we do see your hand, <laughs> so please. Yes, I had a question. Thank you very much, Dr. Nina, for enlightening talk. And I have a question about, again, uh, uh, please uh, uh, forgive me for my ignorance about the period, but uh, I have a question regarding the Christ how the images transformation of the images, the how, like how we usually see Virgin Mary holding the Christ and the, how is the, uh, the visually, is that periodically, is that linked to the historical background or something that 
changes the you mean icono iconography yes yes depicted um, uh, with uh, christ or without christ and so yes on. exactly yeah. yes what i can say is uh, if we go back to the first centuries in roman catacomb we catacombs they are not individual uh, depiction of um, virgin mary they are a couple of images uh, with uh, images of christ on her bosom against of her breast she holds him and um, usually it is accepted uh, that um, the individual images representations of virgin they come from um, historical uh, histor narrative scenes narrative compositions of um, of, vener of adoration of magi and um, it is accepted that first icons if we talk about icons and not images generally a virgin was depicted with his um, divine son and the uh, particularly the icon of Odigitria uh, it, the name comes from Odegon monastery in Constantinople and um, it is believed that um, again traditionally that this icon uh, the archetype the prototype of this um, iconographic type has been painted by um, uh, by the by Saint Luke, uh, and of course it's a legend, but it stresses the importance of the um, evangelist. I mean, and this stresses the importance of this particular icon. Every image has, of course, uh, basis theological concept, the dogmatic concept, and the images with uh, of the Virgin with Child with Christ. Um, it is uh, embodiment of Chalcedonian dogma, the incarnation of Christ and the, 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 the Chalcedonian dogma, which accepts, which um, li lies on the concept that Christ uh, has divine and uh, uh, divine and um, manly nature, yeah, human nature. Uh, so every, uh, every image has its um, history, its function, its theological and symbolic background. And most of the icons which, which survive, so the earliest icons, earliest images are dated back to the sixth century. And this is generally when um, started the development of the art of icon, icon painting, not only icon painting, even metal icons and um, let's say um, steatite or uh, ivory icons. So the earliest icons of the Virgin uh, are dated back to the sixth century. Again, each iconographic type has its theological and symbolic meaning. And you can't say that this icon is earlier than that one. And there is so one line of development. First, she was depicted virgin without child and then with child. Some iconographic types, they emerge at the same in, in, par in parallel and at the, at the same time. Some of them most complicated, um, uh, let's say complicated, not visually, but uh, complicated, um, uh, I mean, uh, ideological and symbolic meaning are elaborated in later period. And um, like this um, um, already mentioned Zodochos Pigi, when uh, literally she, uh, the Virgin with child against uh, holding uh, Christ against her um, chest, um, is depicted she comes out from fiali from fontaine and so this is literal illustration of mother then lately we have the whole cycles of akathistos the hymn dedicated to the virgin with which was created um, in seventh century after the uh, miraculously um, uh, after the miraculous recover let's say of uh, constantinople from the sieges and um but traditionally, the cornerstone of icon most um, complex and one of the most uh, earlier version uh, is Virgin with Child, so-called Odigitria. <laughs> but in the she holds um, Christ in different manner on her left hand, on her right uh, hand. She holds before her breast, chest. So they are different variations. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge and very interesting and important subject. Sorry, I can't give you, um, no. let's say, completely cover every aspect. No, I understand. Yeah. Yes. So, so you say, but this is, like a... as in catacombs, there are a couple of images, half figures, represented virgin holding Christ. Mm -hmm. And they're um, 
some compositions of enunciation. So woman is sitting on chair and the winged or um, person without wing addresses her, gestures towards her. And these compositions are interpreted as enunciations. And um, some figures in gesture on praying gesture, orans, so-called orans, some of them are identified by some of the scholars with virgin. It's under mm -hmm. question because they are not is inscribed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Narmin. <clears throat> and um, I guess John raised the hand. Um, John, please. Uh, yes, me again. Um, I had an interesting suggestion for the, the rather curious motif of the virgin and child appearing between the statues of Apollo and Artemis in the pagan temple. What's interesting about that to me is that if you look at Carolingian crosses, Mm -hmm. In the on either side of the cross, there is a sun and a moon. And yes. Apollo, of course, is the god of the sun, and Artemis is the goddess of the moon. So it evokes essentially on the crucifixion scenes the sun and the moon on either side, which would connect up the incarnation with then the return and the intercessory function then that comes from the Virgin Mary with the defeat of death by Christ on his cross. So that would be a very complex image that might be being indicated by this uh, sort of slightly bizarre detail, otherwise bizarre detail of Apollo and Artemis statue coming like in between the two of them. So anyway, that was the suggestion. Did I speak too fast? <laughs> oh, no, no, it's okay. Uh, just one remark that generally depiction of uh, sun and moon in um, crucifixions, generally they are interpreted as a symbol of cosmological importance of this event. Mm -hmm. uh, as far yeah. as that, yeah. Yeah, well, that's fine. But but the point is that, that the yeah, presence yeah, yeah. of the yeah. sun and moon on either side, never mind what it's supposed to mean, but, but the, yeah. the significance of it is that, that you are referencing the cosmologically important yeah. event by that depiction. So mm -hmm. it's being referenced. You're referencing the other image together and it all kind of works. It works very nicely with, with the child on the lap then in that position because the reference is to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, yeah, so um, anybody with the uh, with the comments or with the questions, please. Yeah. Mm, all right. So um, I, I guess no one is willing to give a comment. Or, uh, sorry, sorry, Maria. I I yes, see. Yes, of course. The Rubens. Um, um uh, message maybe yeah. good marketing yeah, maybe good marketing yeah. so this, I, I guess it's about half holy yeah. icon right Super? marketing done by who by well uh, <laughs> it, was, it oh. was partially a joke but uh yeah. of course there is a part of truth in it uh, well uh i mean uh, marketing is a strong word but yeah, yeah. kind of uh mm, kind of a promotion, of course, from Georgian church and tourist, uh, national tourism organizations, of course, and that's totally fine. I mean, you cannot, uh, you know, it's also a bit understandable if you want to create a national landmarks or symbols, you cannot cover all the historical periods and include all the uh, uh, like iconographical styles, motifs, symbols, you have to limit to something. <laughs> I guess that's that's a bit uh, out. I mean, that's not exactly uh, in the realm of our research, right? Uh, we we try to be as detailed as possible um, and as accurate as possible. But for the people who are managing cultural heritage or or or, or yeah or making marketing of museums of tourists of natural states they really have to limit something uh, so speaking very frankly you cannot um, i mean all tourists to georgia you cannot just explain everybody about all the types of saperavi and georgian wines right you just say georgian wine the oldest one and you don't 
uh, you 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 don't go into you don't give them uh, research papers <laughs> and say please read it. <laughs> you give some touristic, very um, yeah superficial superficial um, things, which is which is fine, of course, right? Ruben, you know, while reading your um, your suggestion, let's say message mm -hmm. marketing, I agree with you, but marketing of King David, not of the modern museum stuff. <laughs> right, but but it was uh, the same before, right? The same read, the same methods. Not the same, of course, but <laughs> yeah, <it's sort> of <laughs> comparable. Well, you're absolutely right. A sort of marketing, but marketing of royals of, of the royal scale, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Promotion of his uh, kingdom, of his of importance and um, power, and so on. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nina, for um, such interesting uh, presentation and event. I guess the, our participants um, got the mm, nice information. Um, I guess Narmin. Oh, no. Uh, Narmin oh, has <laughs> the. <laughs> uh, Reminding <so>. our. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, we usually do the events, so time by time, I mean, monthly, and uh, everybody's um, free to send abstracts and ideas, um, and just please, um, we work uh, in Caucasus, so any topic about the, I don't know, archaeology, art history, history, or uh, linguistics or anything related to Caucasus is um, will be very much welcome, and we we can give you them the, the place to speak, and the, we we could give you a moderator and so on and so on. So we have a Facebook page. Um, I mean the Facebook group. So just find us on a Facebook, on a Twitter, uh, and Narmin just um, wrote in a comments in a chat section that our uh, email address as well. So 